Hello, hello, testing, testing. Hey everyone, this is Hussein from Effectsco. Um, welcome to the webinar. This is uh, actually my first webinar ever. Uh, so in this webinar, I'll be conducting a live uh, session on uh, getting people to understand about how Nuke works and uh, people who are already using After Effects for a while now, um, how do they then start using Nuke or understand how to use Nuke, okay? So uh, if you have any questions, please uh, um, give, it, give your comments. Uh, Humera is on. Hi, Humera, how are you? Glad you can join me. Uh, Okay, so um, if I can ask a question to everyone or whoever it's joined in, uh, where you, are you guys from? You just put in the comments and I'll, I'll be able to read it. I'd like to know where you guys are from so I can uh, talk in either English language or in the local language at the same time. Because I, I, did, I did mention that I'm going to probably talk in both languages, but if there are a lot of international people, then I'll just speak in English. Or if there are local people who wants me to talk in uh, the local language, Bahasa Malaysia, saya pun boleh cakap Bahasa Malaysia. No problem. Uh, Umaira, I know you are from uh, uh, from Pakistan, Karachi. Okay. Um, let's see whether we have any comments here. So the idea today is to talk about um, how I can uh, make it easy for you to start using Nuke. Uh, Nuke is actually a bit daunting, but it's not a difficult software to, to understand or to learn. Uh, once you get the idea of how to set up the nodes together, where to put them, uh, you probably get an idea of how it works. Initially, probably it's going to be a bit difficult, but uh, hopefully with this uh, live webinar, I can uh, teach you on how you can start. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see how many people. Uh, where are you? Okay, I've got Humira here with me. Okay. So what I'm going to start, I'm going to start the uh, the session, and I'm going to talk about uh, something simple first. Perhaps we can look at uh, the, the similarities or the differences between After Effects and Nuke and how After Effects works and how Nuke works. Yeah. So as you come in, if you, if you don't mind, um, am I still on? Okay. So I'm going to show you the screen for uh, after Effects first, and I'm going to open up. I'm going to create a com, a brand new com, so we can all start uh, from beginning. I'm going to create a com uh, both in uh, After Effects, and also we're going to create a com inside of uh, Nuke. Okay, so let me just switch to my After Effects screen here. Okay, so now we're in After Effects. Okay, so this is AE, um, something that we already know that we love. Okay, I was just playing with some stuff here. So I'm going to delete this particular layer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a simple, a simple footage. Yeah, uh, as you know, in After Effects, you can bring in AVI files, MOV files, MP4 files. Uh, any video files you can bring into After Effects, it's not a problem. After Effects is not that fussy, okay? Um, so I'm going to just uh, import an item. So you, I, I think probably you guys know how to do this. I'm gonna, not going to waste time on uh, dwelling, dwelling a lot on the After Effects side. But maybe in the Nuke side, I'm going to go a bit slow. So I'm going to do a right click and I say import file. And I'm going to jump to one of my um, hard drive, which I hooked up to the machine. I'm going to go into, let's let me look at my files here. I'm going to do some nuke files. 
and I'm gonna go down to the footage here, background plate. So this is a JPEG sequence. Uh, as I mentioned just now that we can bring in um, video files and all that, but this particular one is actually a JPEG sequence. So I'm going to just select the first one and make sure at the bottom here. Um, I'll look at the slide screen. Maybe you can't, guys can't see my, my screen, but it's okay. Let me just bring in a JPEG sequence. There you go. All right, I've got some JPEG sequence here. And I'm going to create a comp out of it. So I'm going to create, click that and drag onto the comp. So here we have a sequence. And I'm going to hit my spacebar to play that. It's a simple sequence of how um, there's about this little boy who was cycling towards the house. So it's just a footage of... Um, so this, this particular footage comes from a story called I Love Sarah Jane. It's actually a footage that was give me to be, uh, given to me by FXPHD. So it's actually a story about the um, uh, apocalypse, um, zombie land. So if you notice this particular shot, it's very clean. Uh, the windows are very clean. Uh, there's nothing going on to show that this one is like um, an aftermath or you know, after zombie has come, come in and destroyed all the human beings. And you can't see that. So the idea for this shot is for us to make the things look as if uh, it's a war-torn place, you know, maybe there's some problems on this, there's graffiti on this uh, this house here, on the walls. Uh, maybe this window has been closed by certain, you know, some planks and all that. And then we'll put some stuff here to make it look as if it's a very old stuff. I'm going to show you the comp in new a little later. But I just want to show you how uh, you can import footages into uh, After Effects, which I think you, already, you guys already know, right? Quite easy to understand. Okay, so normally uh, if I work in After Effects, I like to be a bit organized. Uh, it's good to organize your stuff uh, for you to be able to find them later quickly. And especially when you are giving this to your uh, colleagues for them to work on, uh, if you put them nicely in folders and name them nicely, it'll be a good thing for you to do. So in my case, I have created a COM folder here. So I'm going to just drag it into the COM folder. Okay, that's my com folder and then this is my footage which is this um, sequence of images I'm gonna put that into under assets you can call it asset you can call it files you can call it footage or whatever you want doesn't matter yeah so here I have um, why do I have two I just know only one so I'm gonna take that one out so here I have the footage so this is how we do it in After Effects and you guys already know this it's very easy, drag and drop, and it works, okay? So now I want to jump into Nuke and show you how you um, bring footage into Nuke instead of, uh, you know, a uh, file import and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to switch to my... I'm going to just stop this for a second. Okay, I'm going to go to my uh, Nuke layout. Okay, so this is Nuke. And um, let me just get rid of this because I was trying to do some notes later all right so if you notice nuke is a very simple layout all right we only have three windows which is your viewing window here this is where you view your footage this is where you assemble your notes or in this case your effects and whatnot right we call it notes n o d e s and here is the property for every note every note comes with a property Okay. At the moment, there's nothing going on, so we've got three windows. So I'm going to import the same footage as earlier. But uh, if you notice, if I go to File, there's no such thing as Import. Okay, You can't find Import here. You will not be able to find it. Okay, File, Import. I think you can't be, you're not looking at my screen. Maybe you can. Can you see the screen? Anybody can uh, give me a feedback if the screen is okay? And we can uh, put a comment there, see whether uh, the screen is okay. Can you guys uh, see what I'm trying to do? Maybe Faiz can tell me. Faiz is online at the moment. And Charlie just joined us. 
If you can give me a feedback, uh, if the screen is okay, that will be good. Okay, good. Uh, Humira is saying that it's okay. All right, excellent. So I'm going to continue. Um, so again, I'm going to import the footage. Uh, I'm going to go up to File or Import. Or you can see this little uh, curse, this little uh, icon over top side on the left hand side, the icon. You see a uh, um, one of the uh, wordings that called read. So in in um, in Nuke, we don't import. We do a read, R-E-A-D, yeah? or there's a shortcut or hotkey called R there. So once you do that, it's going to pop up this little a little window asking you where you where your files are. So I'm going to go and pick up that particular, same particular footage. And I'm going to go to my <coughs> e tutorials so under my Nuke. Oops. Nuke. I'm going to go down to Nuke for Trainers. I'm going to go down to level 1 and it's going to be in my files. And this is the footage. Okay, and that's the footage. Okay, you will see it here, yeah, but you won't see it here in the screen. For some reason, it doesn't show. If you do it in After Effects, it comes in straight away. You can view and you can start working on it. But unfortunately, in Nuke, it doesn't work that way, right? So we can see that we have a node called the Viewer here, right? It's called Viewer One. So what you need to do is you need to select, you need to attach the Viewer to the Read node. And then you can see it inside the screen here. Yeah? So I can zoom in a bit, you can see. Now, if I want to play the sequence, we have play buttons down here in the middle. Yeah. So I click on the play button here. Now it plays the sequence. Okay, so there you go. So that's how you import footages into uh, Nuke. In After Effects, we saw just now, it's uh, very straightforward, right? We can see that uh, just drag it into it is this uh, and then it'll be a, a layer here okay so in after effects we use layers but inside of nuke we use nodes right this is a node so i like i like the nodes because we can really zoom in and zoom out and you know we can see the whole picture of all the thing right and this is this one works wonderfully i also want to show you how you can uh, work with notes and how to hook them up as well. So that's another thing that a lot of people are telling me that I can't remember or I don't know how to hook them up. I don't know which to, to hook up to, to which part. So that's also a good thing that um, I will show you how the Foundry wants you to do it, right? So if you notice now, um, if you look at this footage here, it looks very nice, okay? Very sharp. But uh, if I want to make it blur, okay? So in After Effects, how would you do a blur? So you select the uh, the layer, and then you go to your effects and preset. Maybe you look for something called fast blur, okay? And then you double click on it, all right? And then it appears in your effects controls, and then you can make it blur, all right? That's how you do it, okay? So you have select the layer, look for your presets or effects, okay? And then attach it to the layer, and then you can start playing with it. So in, in uh, Nuke, it's almost the same, okay, almost the same, I'll reset that. If I jump back to Nuke, um, what we can do is to blur this footage, we have to use a blur node, yeah, blur node. So there are uh, several ways for you to bring in uh, nodes into, uh, into Nuke, right? Uh, there are a few ways, I'll show you the first way, which is you can go to the left hand side, which is your tools here. Okay, you look for your filters, which is this icon over here. It's a little there filter. Yeah, click on it and then you go and look for blur. Blur is usually the first one. Okay, in Nuke, if you want to use something which is commonly used all the time, it always has a hotkey. It always has a keyboard shortcut. In this case, blur has a keyboard shortcut. And the keyboard shortcut for blur is B. Very obvious, yeah? So if I do not remember which um note to go for and where they are i look i look for it in the tools okay blur is the first one or if i hover my mouse in the note graph this is called a note graph i press b b for bravo or b for blur blur pops up okay and all i need to do is just drag it into the line 
between the viewer and the footage okay, or in this case the read node so once it turns to white that means it's trying to hook up if I now let go of my mouse it will just hook up yeah and you will see that blur has its own properties in the property property bin on the right hand side okay if you notice it's actually now size is zero okay maybe um, it's too small for you to guys to view but I hope you can you guys can see it yeah so I'm going to change the size of the blur maybe I can put a 20 so I'm going to just type in 20 so now you can see my footage blur okay so that's how we uh, put effects into nuke we do not have a layer base it's called a node base okay so in a nuke the approach is top down okay you go from the top you go downwards okay that's called the b pipe i always teach this to my students when they come in b pipe yeah the b pipe the bravo pipe uh, in uh, in after effects is the other way around in after effects you work upwards okay you go from the bottom the back the background the mid ground the foreground you work upwards yeah that's how you do it okay so again uh, blur you can just increase the blur right and if you want to do a color correction okay, I'm going to show you how color correction is done inside of After Effects obviously you guys know this okay so I'm going to take the blur up I'm going to use it so I'm going to look for something like perhaps uh, if I think I'm not mistaken if you do color correction they love to use either levels or things like curves and all that stuff okay maybe this image is a bit too dark I want to make it brighter so we can either go from effects and presets we can type in the word levels if you remember if you don't remember you can go to effects okay obviously select effects and then you go to color correction and then you choose something like perhaps levels okay and then levels will pop up in your effects here okay and then you can start playing with the levels okay so I make it a bit brighter let me make it slightly brighter and then you can also play with this so I'm going to jump back to Facebook and see how you guys are doing because this is my first time doing Facebook I'm not sure whether you guys are um, it's everything clear Okay, Chris Kamarudin, thanks for joining in, man. So, I think I should jump back to AE first. Okay, all right. So, sorry about that. Uh, so, now we are in AE. Okay, so what I've done here, I've brought in a uh, levels, yeah, which is uh, very useful and always use color correction tool, yeah? other levels or curves. People like to use this, and it's a very, very powerful tool and uh, I just brighten it up a bit if I do a reset here you can see I can just bring it the uh, the highlights to the left you can see I'm highlighting yeah so now you can see I can see it brighter okay so this is how you do it in uh, in After Effects uh, we use uh, something called levels okay unfortunately in Nuke we do not have something called levels there's no such thing as levels in Nuke they have something similar but it's not called levels okay so let me jump back to uh, Nuke Okay, and let's have a look. So I'm going to stop the playback. Okay, and I'm going to delete the blur. By the way, if you want to delete any notes, you just select the note and press delete on your keyboard. Yeah, D for delete. Yeah, or oh, sorry, not D for delete, D for uh, delete the keyboard. Okay, I'm going to zoom that in so you can see it better. So for color correcting inside of Nuke, we use another note called grade note. G R A D E. Yeah? So if you go down back to your tools on the left hand side, you can see that's uh, this little icon that looks like a, a color wheel. Click on it and then you go down, you can see a color uh, a note called grade note. And again, in, in a Nuke, anything that has a hotkey is the one that's always been used. It's the most favorite tool to use. Okay, if you notice here, grade note and the color correct note are popular. Okay, so I'm going to click on grade note and since I was my read note was selected it hooks up for me automatically okay I'll do that one more time I'll do a control Z okay 
So since my, uh, if I, nothing is selected in my node graph, if I do a great node again, it will not be hooked up. It'll be just hovering around here, okay? But if my read node is selected like that, highlighted, if I do a great node, uh, again, great node up here, it's gonna be automatically hooked up into the pipe, into the system, yeah? Into the script. So uh, please take note of that. If you uh, you want to make your life simple, just select first and then put in the uh, grid node. Or another way I can do is select and press G for grid. Okay. So if you notice on the right hand side, we have a lot of uh, dials, uh, uh, sliders. But in Nuke, we don't call them sliders. We call them knobs. K N O B S. Okay. Let me just bring up a backdrop here. I can type in so you can see what I'm typing in. So uh, a backdrop node is actually a very good note for you to um, make some, push that here a bit, I can see it, yeah, okay. Uh, to make some notes, okay. So, um, I type in there, uh, use grid for color, color correction. And to the the they are called knobs, not sliders. Yeah. If you really want to be technical, if you are working for people and you want to show them that you know Nuke, do not use sliders. Just say knobs. K N O B S. Yeah. You can see it over there. Okay, I'll make some notes as I go along. And this backdrop note is actually a, uh, an awesome note that we can um, create notes and uh, such other things. I'll show you what uh, the backdrop note can be used also as well. But I normally write down and I take uh, notes, um, put notes inside there as well. But if I double click my backdrop note, uh, in the backdrop note on the top right side here, you can see I can change its color. I just click on that. Maybe I want to make it a bit more red. I'll make it more nice little color that you can see on the screen yeah it's just by little this little swatch over here so I'm gonna close that so I'm gonna leave it there so we, for you guys to read okay so we have a great note selected and then uh, if I double click it knows the notes uh, goes to the top so here uh, in the property bin we can stack as many as properties as we want okay if I do another blur note here and if I do uh, maybe another great note here you can see it's stacking up on the right hand side and sometimes it gets a bit confusing because there are too many of them and when you select one you don't know whether you're doing the right great note or the other great note you can see yeah it's highlighting the one on the top so in order for you not to get confused uh, i recommend that you clear the bin by clicking this little x up here okay and if you notice the top up here there's a little small little 10 yeah so this one says that you can stack up until 10 properties of any of the nodes, but I don't recommend that. I can only recommend that you put two there, okay? So at any one time, if I double click on grade now, there's one here, double click on blur, it's only two, right? If I click another grade, it will not exceed more than two nodes, yeah? Double bit. So it's only gonna be two properties on the right-hand side. So I like it like that. I just wanna see two of them at, at any time, okay? So in order for us to not get confused, so I'm going to delete these two notes, which I'm going to now demo to you. So make sure that you are double clicking and then it appears on the right hand side. So again, we are trying to make this thing brighter. Okay. So new, we have a few uh, items here. We have black point, white point, lift, gain, multiply, offset. So you will not understand all this if you come from the After Effects background. The same happened to me. I, I was confusing me. What is lift? What is gain? What is multiply? I couldn't understand. So there are similarities, yeah. Um, if you're talking about lift, is talking about the 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 shadows, okay. The gain is actually talking about the highlights. So the multiply, uh, obviously the gamma is the midtones, right? So you can play with that. But it takes a bit of um, tweaking and a bit of experimenting for you to understand how they work, okay. And the cool thing about Nuke is that whenever you highlight your your mouse or your cursor on top of any of the uh, uh, the, the areas that you can punch in the numbers, it gives you some sort of a, um, a notification. Okay, like this one, black point, the color is turned into black. 
Okay. If I do under gain, it says here when white is turned into this color. Okay. And then gamma is actually what it says. Gamma correction applied is to final result. Okay. So it gives some sort of answer. And the other cool thing I like about Nuke is that, uh, that, 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 that uh, there's none in After Effects is that if you see this little question mark on the top right corner, and this little question mark sometimes gives you a help. It's some, some sort of a concise help inside of Nuke itself. Okay. So if you do not know how uh, to use Nuke or to use Grade Node in this case, you just click on this little question mark on the top right, and then it will jump into uh, your website, and it gives you all the information that you need about that Grade Node. How awesome is this? This is basically uh, a manual inside of Nuke directly. So you don't understand what they are. In the information, you can see that they have everything about here. Every little um, item inside the great note, it spells out for you. It shows you what it also is all about. So I find that very intuitive and very helpful, especially when you are just learning, yeah. Uh, or you sometimes you get you tend to forget things and you want to understand how things work again. Maybe you have not used it for quite a while. This is the best way to learn. Okay, let me jump back to uh, to Nuke and let's talk about the great note. Okay, so again we want to make this one brighter. So again, I'm going to use the gain, right? If I just scrub it to the right, okay? I drag it to the right. It's similar to what we do inside of After Effects when we use the levels, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to make it brighter like that. So you can see that the sliders go that way. So can, I can even play with my gamma, okay? Gamma, and then we have a bit of the uh, lift. Lift is all talking about the, uh, uh, the shadows, okay? Shadows, a bit darker. Right. So after a while, you will understand, you will get the idea of how to do color correction in this manner. It's actually quite easy. In this case, uh, I can also uh, use this extra little, um, this, uh, what do you call the color wheels here. So I can make it things like, uh, I'm going to show you that in the next sequence when I, I import. I'm going to show you how you can, uh, let, we will do a bit of uh, a simple comp uh, and then they will play with it and how to make things look cool inside of, uh, inside of Nuke. Yeah. So that's how we do color color grading inside of uh, Nuke in comparing in comparison to After Effects. Yeah. So in After Effects, uh, we know that we have a layer. We can put effects to the layers, and then we can adjust those effects in the effects and control panels. Okay. And we know that uh, in uh, After Effects we work bottom up, but in Nuke we work the other way around, yeah. In in new we work um, top down. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna uh, create something new. I'm gonna bring in a simple sequence, and I'm gonna show you how we can do it inside of After Effects, and then also we jump to Nuke and see how we can do that in in Nuke. So you can you guys can compare of how uh, After Effects and Nuke work. But but before that, I want to show you a typical comp that we as have inside of Nuke, and I will show you how. Um, very, um, I, I, I like the UI so you can see the whole comp um, because I'm sure if you guys have worked in uh, After Effects before, you know that we have pre-comps after pre-comps -pre after pre-comps and that sometimes can be a bit confusing and sometimes things are hidden away from you for you to find it's quite, easy, quite difficult. But in Nuke, everything is in front of you. You can see it. So let me open up this sequence, the same sequence, but it's, a, it's the completed version. Uh, of this uh, zombie uh, apocalypse. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in running inside of uh, Nuke here. All right, so this is Nuke. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that, okay. And then let me open up that, that the final footage for you, right? So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to say open comp and I'm going to jump down to my E drive. Let me have a look. Okay, and this is the comp that I'll be talking about. And in you can you can open up as many comp as you want, not a problem. Yeah, uh, you can open up um, if your if your uh, PC has a lot of memory and a lot of RAM, then you can open up as many as you want. So I'm gonna let me just 
put this thing here together okay all right so it's some some error files here not a problem we can replace that yeah so if you notice here i'm pressing my space bar you can see this is how a new uh, tree works yeah top down so you start with your uh, you start with your uh, main footage yeah and then you go all the way down and then you add more stuff and this is the fun part the merge okay the merge is the one that's we use a lot in nuke okay merge is the how we merge uh, it's uh, um, let me put it this way if you have a lot of pre comps so this is considered one pre comp okay and then you merge it with the background uh, merge it with the uh, the other one and then you have another free pre comp and then you merge it with into the system uh, into the script and then you have pre comps and pre comps and pre comps and pre comps and then you merge okay again pre comp you merge another pre comp you merge all right the same thing pre comp pre comp pre comp and then you merge it back and then at the end of the day you can see the whole result yeah so Basically, if you look at it, you can see everything, right? You can zoom in, zoom out, you can move around. You can select that and press F for you to zoom in, right? If I press, I select that and I press F to fill, to zoom in, and I can see what I'm doing, okay? Obviously, this one has a lot of errors, but let me just uh, replace this with, uh, if I open up my read note, this bar. Uh, if you have, guys have any questions, please do put in the comments so I can try and answer for you. So I'm going to go and back get my, I think I'll copy from this side here. So Nuke is awesome because you just copy and paste anything that you want. Okay, I'm going to replace that. Can you guys see it? Oh, okay. Uh, I think you guys cannot see it. Okay, let me just set another one here. Um, give me one second. To capture. Okay. Right. Okay. So you can see that uh, it's kind of huge um, script. Uh, not so huge. This is considered not a huge script. It's actually a quite simple script, and it goes all the way down. Okay. And if you notice these colors. These are all backdrop notes, just like what I did just now, right? So I, I create one backdrop note for one pre-com. Um, we don't call it pre-com in Nuke, by the way, but uh, I can just put it like a group, you know, I can move them together. So that's how it works, yeah? And this is a very nice way for you to group things together. If you just create a backdrop note, um, I can just press tab on my keyboard and I press B-A-C-K because I remember. And I can create a backdrop note. Okay, and then I can put notes in here. Maybe I put a couple of blur notes. Okay, and then when I drag the backdrop note, they all move together. This is nice. Okay, if I delete the backdrop note, everything gets deleted. And if I press D, as in disable, everything gets disabled. Right? That means we can do a before and after kind of check by pressing the D key. I'm pressing the D key on my keyboard. Okay, in this case, if I press and I press D, it disables. Yeah, if you notice that they all get disabled. Disabled means this whole comp here or this considered like this pre-comp uh, is going to be disabled. Okay, you can see the big X around it. Okay. It's a very good way for you to check whether your comp is working or not. Or if any of the nodes are not working or something is not right, this is a faster way of doing things. Okay, so I'm going to delete that off. So again, you can see 
very um i would say uh, if you are really if you really like to uh, make sure that things are in sequence right or you like to make sure that things work correctly this is how you do it from the top to the bottom yeah we call it the b pipe so when my students learn from me i always insist that they do the b pipe okay and you can see everything has been attached with the merge node i'll cover more about the merge node in a second but uh, i'm just show you how it works so i can even take this one to this side okay so the rule of thumb uh, when you're doing something for in nuke right you must always make sure that they are in parallel or they don't run the other way around right so if i let's say if i put a blur note here another blur note here another blur note here uh, we don't do something like uh, put another blur note crisscross yeah this is a big no-no inside of nuke we don't do this it has to be straight okay obviously this one is not going down because we cannot put the arrows up here the arrows have to go down so this one will have to go up this one will go like that and that and that okay so we put them like that okay okay so let's go back to our main comp okay so this is how we work in Nuke. We make um, so-called pre-coms and then we attach them to the main using the merge node. Okay, so I'm going to use my space bar, go back to our normal. So I want to show you now how we can create a simple com uh, using After Effects and Nuke. And you can see the comparison by yourself. Okay, let's start inside of um, AE first. Okay, I'm going to go back to AE. So I'm going to uh, create a new sequence. Yeah, I'll create a new sequence. I'm going to import a simple JPEG sequence. I'm going to right click, say import. This is uh, obviously you guys already know how to do it. But before I proceed, can I just uh, check on you guys whether everything is fine? Are you guys enjoying? Is uh, everybody still here? Okay, how to add keyframe? Uh, Muhammad Ali said how to add keyframe. Uh, okay. So inside of a uh, nuke, there's such, such thing called a um, uh, we call it a dope sheet. Yeah, uh, a dope sheet is how we do animation in uh, in After Effects. Uh, sorry, in nuke. I'll show you that in a second. Just uh, Adli, please just ha hang on a second. Huh? I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, Norfolk, thanks for coming in. Uh, Hanafi, thank you for joining in. Um, So I'll show you that in a second. Just uh, Adli, please just ha hang on a second. Huh? I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, Norfol, thanks for coming in. Uh, Hanafi, thank you for joining in. Um, so I'll show you that in a second. Just uh, Adli, please just ha hang on a second. Huh? I'll okay. show you that in a bit. Uh, Norfol, thanks for coming in. Uh, Hanafi, thank you for joining in. Um, So I'll show you that in a second. Just uh, Adli, please just ha hang on. So a feel free okay. to put in the comments uh, on the on the right hand side, uh, at the bottom of the window. Uh, so if you have any questions, please ask away. I'll be I'll be glad to uh, answer it for you. Okay. So feel so, free to put in the comments. Uh, on so let's do a simple comp inside of After Effects. Okay. So I'm going to jump back to After Effects. Um, after Effects, my good old friend After Effects. Uh, okay, there we go. All right, we are in After Effects. So I'm going to import a simple sequence, yeah, and I'm going to show you how we can do it in After Effects and also how to do it in New. So I'm going to go and import a file. File import. I'm going to go back to tutorials let me go back to here let's look at um, one second
Okay, this is it. This is actually a simple train sequence in JPEG. Okay, I'm going to create a comp out of it. Right, very easy. Press the play button, you can see what's going on. Okay, let's do a bit of zooming. There you go. Right, simple boring sequence of a train in a train station. And it's about uh, 15 seconds of footage. Right, nothing so interesting. Nothing uh, so interesting about it. So, but we're going to make it interesting. Okay, what if your client comes and tells you, uh, can you put a bit of nice uh, um, sun coming through the background here, the back window? I want it to be like a very shimmering kind of stuff. So, how would you do it in uh, in After Effects? Okay, maybe you guys know some effects uh, of how to make um, a ray coming out from the window, right? Uh, it's quite easy. So maybe first thing we can use is something like. Um, uh, maybe because I love to use levels or curves, so I look start with levels first. Okay, throw it in there, and then we can go in into the red channel and make it a bit more interesting by make it more. Uh, I would say orange in color, perhaps something like an evening shot. Yeah, golden hour, something like that. Okay. Uh, and then you can go and look for something like um, um, a ray or something, CC ray or something. I can't remember exactly what to do in uh, After Effects. Uh, maybe you guys can suggest in the comments. But I want to show you how uh, I do it in Nuke. Okay, and how, how I can uh, make it look nicer in Nuke. Okay, let's jump to Nuke. And uh, let me just stop that here. Okay, this is new. I'm going to close this window. So I'm not going to use this window now. I'm going to save that. I'm going to use the window that I already opened here. You can see that. Okay, uh, I'm going to... The, the best part about Nuke is that you can create comps and comps and comps and comps in the same file. No worries. And then if it, for some reason, uh, um, God forbid that if it crashes, it always saves as a file for you automatically. So there's no worry about that, okay? And usually the new comps are very, very light. They are just text files. So that's the reason why you can create thousands of nodes in one file and they open up very, very fast, okay? Um, After Effects is a bit bulky because it carries with them a lot of files and uh, sometimes it becomes, becomes bulky because uh, the images that you have, uh, the solids that you make, uh, mix it into a, a big uh, a big file yeah okay so let's have, see how you can do it this one here yeah so I'm going to import the same file again I'm going to do a read R for read and I'm going to go and pick up the same um, footage I'm going to go down to uh, education One of one, stitch train sequences one. Okay, but if you notice here that um, I always bring in sequences into Nuke, and Nuke does not like movie files, MOV files. It does not like uh, AVI. It does not like uh, any any files which has a container. You know the sequence of containers. So what it loves, it loves sequence of images because it works very very fast even if you guys are doing in after effects i i would recommend you to bring in sequences instead of bringing the mov file yeah so it'll be much faster and uh, be uh, not so resource heavy on your system so i'm going to bring that in so this is my train sequence again i'm going to use my viewer click and drag into that punch it in right so this is my sequence a simple sequences Okay, and this is the sequence. If I click on play, you can see the same sequence that I did in After Effects. Okay, and it just plays and all that. So I'm going to make this look as if it's a golden hour. Uh, make it look, uh, give it a golden hour look. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my favorite tool, obviously, to for color correction. It's a great, G R A D E, great note, yeah, as I mentioned earlier. So let me stop that and go back to the beginning. G for grid. Okay, and in the property itself on the right hand side, you can see I can go to my gain. Uh, why am I going to gain? Because uh, out of, out of uh, experience, I probably like to use gain and multiply. So we can see that uh, um, 
um, this is the basically we are, we are changing the mid uh, the, the highlights yeah we are playing with the highlights so I'm going to go to my gain and click on this little uh, color wheel and I'm going to increase the uh, the orange towards the orange to make it look like as if it's a uh, it's a nice little um, golden hour look right that's how we got it so if I select my grade node and I press D for disable enable you can see the before and after this is what I like about um, nuke yeah you can see the before and after by disabling the node okay you can see the difference now and now I will I would like to have this little sun ray coming in from the outside yeah into into the uh, into the wind from the window right from the outside so we have a little effects called the volume ray which is inside of nuke which is wonderful so I will just go to my effects and look for volume ray right V for volume rays there you go right and now this is the node that comes with it. It has two connection. Instead of having a one connection, now this one has two connection. Okay, it's gonna be a bit of confusing or uh, a bit more a bit confusing for you guys to understand how to, which one to hook up. But after a lot of practice, uh, after doing simple simple comms, you will understand how to hook things up. Uh, it took me a while to understand as well. Uh, I would understand how where you're coming from. But again, uh, practice is very important. Yeah, you keep on practicing it, and then you do with it, and then it it, it you should understand. It, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my window to the front. Okay. All right. We got a volume ray there. I'm going to hook up this image uh, connector into the image yeah into the okay so now if i view this instead of that you can see there's something funny happening here is that this some array is coming out okay and you can notice this volume position so i'm going to take the volume position and i'm going to put it near to the window so now you can see something is happening right you can see that the ray is coming through the window so that's going to be awesome okay and our volume race has its own properties here we can increase a lot of stuff we can play with that but not for now we just put it aside for now but how do we make the this to hook up with this okay we have this and then we want to hook up to this okay this is where the merge node comes in yeah so the viewer is just for you to view so what we need to do now is to merge these two um, nodes together so the merge node is living inside here under the uh, the toolbox here right it's in here called the merge node the M okay it's short form for merge is M so I'm gonna bring that up and merge has, has only two connection A or B okay so you need to decide which is which is the background which is the foreground okay the B is always we put it to background and then the A is always the one that's the foreground. So in, uh, in After Effects, you put the background at the bottom, the foreground at the, at the top. But here we use a merge node. Okay, so B is for background uh, and uh, great. Yeah. So let's try and hook this up. So I'm gonna view this, and I'm going to take a merge. I'm gonna put this as a background, and this is the foreground. Okay and then view this one now instead of putting this one now you can see that this these two things are combined okay zoom out a bit you can see yeah so it actually should be this way so we are actually merging with the background so now you can see we are having this this pipe coming down and the cool part is if i press my control or command key i get this little elbow and i can make something like that Okay, these are basically diamonds that you can make elbows and all that. This is how we, we try and see whether we can make our nuke script as neat as possible. Okay, so this one comes down, this one goes across and then comes down and goes to the left. That means we hook up to the B pipe. Okay, so now we get something like this. So if I disable my merge node, we get that. Okay, and then we enable it, we get something like that. Okay, but um, again, the array that coming from outside it is not as yellow as the the one in the train so i can always copy this great node control c control v and put it here so now we get a beautiful thing coming out like that if i play that you can see a sequence and it's interacting with 
and you can see a slight shimmering going on as well nice little sun coming through okay and that's actually what, what the volume ray is doing okay so what we do is we combine the two and it automatically does a multiply between the two it does not take away it does a multiply multiply means uh, the two uh, if you if you know if you know about multiply in, in the Photoshop they do the same thing we actually they are they are combining the two up it's just like a blending mode in Photoshop yeah so that's a default set of settings by uh, by After Effects sorry by a nuke yeah that's beautiful look at that yeah this is the before boring nothing nothing nice and this is the after and this you can see the before and after Okay, I'm pressing my keyboard uh, one and two on my keyboard. Okay, I can also do something like this. If I go up here, I can say, give me a wipe. So I can see a wipe okay, before and after. This is cool. All right, so I can do something like that. So I can show my clients. This is how it looks like last time. Now you pay me a thousand ringgit, I make it look nice for you. How about that? <laughs> okay, All right. So I can just remove that away. And now it's something like that, okay? But if you notice down here in your script, yeah, we have two nodes which are basically the same, doing the same thing. And this is what we call uh, unnecessary. Okay, we, are, we need to always optimize our footage, yeah, our new footage, where we only have, if trying possible to use only one node as, uh, as, as much as possible. So what, I'm, what I need to do here is I do not to have, I don't need to have two of this, okay? I can only have one of it. So I'm show you why or how. Uh, let me just show that. Okay, sometimes Nuke has this problem of uh, viewer, you don't see anything in the viewer. So what I do is I delete the viewer. Okay, I make a new one. Command or Control I is the new one. And then hook it up again. Now it should work. Okay. All right. So let me show you something. All right. So now we have two great nodes. What if I delete this great node? Okay. And take this great node, take it out plug it out and put it down here instead okay now I get the same result you see that so instead of choosing two nodes I only use one node which is giving an overall uh, color to the whole script so now I've minimized my usage of the nodes okay right? so the, the least node used is better for you um, and your, your script becomes leaner so I hope you understand what I'm trying to do here. We have two branches, and by the way, we can make as many branches as you want. We can put another, maybe this sequence here, connecting to this sequence here as well. That are not, not a problem, okay? Uh, maybe we can put another great note that comes coming from here and goes to that side. So one asset can be used many multiple times, not a problem. In fact, that's the best way to do it. Do not have multiple of the same assets or multiple of the same notes. Uh, it's gonna be taxing on the, on the script itself and then if you notice here we have a nice beautiful and then this volume position you can move it around if you don't like it there you can take it uh, I can just stop that I can take it and maybe put it somewhere here yeah wherever you do it's just a point of where it starts it's something like the uh, uh, lens lens flare or something like that inside of After Effects yeah we have lens flare but this one has a lot of other things that you can do in the scripting here you can play around with it okay this is how you do it very simple way but now uh, some people are asking me how to animate right just now uh, I think uh, if I go back to my Chrome uh, you guys are asking me about uh, who else what else who else is here Firdaus Raza adding at add keyframe using mix in merge node at keyframe using mix in, I don't know what you mean by that Firdaus uh, maybe you can explain that again and repeat change screen Re again and repeat change what is uh, what's your trying to ask Sumira somebody is crying as well I don't know why she or he is crying okay Adli is asking about how to add keyframe that's a very good question yeah because in uh, in After Effects we uh, we can animate things straight away by using the you know traps the your trans your your uh, spread you know, your scale the position the rotation right all that stuff stuff or your or opacity as well but uh, let me show you how you can do animation inside of uh, in uh, instead of nuke yeah okay uh, before that let's show how it's done in after effects so in after effects if you want to move certain things you just select that maybe you want to change the position p for position uh, let's see if i bring my keyframe here you create a node uh, sorry you create a 
uh, a keyframe uh, maybe go down to four seconds you can move this whole thing around yeah you guys know this right it's simple as that okay in fact i can move things around in my screen just like that if i want to and it automatically creates a keyframe for me right and if i play that you can see it's as if the camera moving okay it's, it's easy yeah because everything is per layer we can put all the uh, transformation information here right we got all the um i call it strap or traps or spread all right opacity rotation scale position but in nuke we don't have that way of doing things okay let me just jump back to nuke and show you how it's done in nuke um, okay, so in Nuke, uh, we we can't move things. You see, I'm I'm clicking and it does not move. No way we can do that. So in Nuke, we have to use a node called Transform Node. Okay, a Transform Node. Uh, let me create something uh, here. Let me just pull this one out. We don't need this thing anymore. Just put that aside. Okay, I'm even going to tell the merge node. Not necessary. I'm going to leave my grade node there. I like the color like that. But uh, if somebody asks me to move this footage. Uh, do a reposition of left or right we can't move it with our cursor yeah it does not work so what we need to do is we need to put it a transform node so t for transform is always the one with the hotkey which is always being used yeah and this is transform node right so if i if you look at the transform nodes properties you can see you have translate which is position rotation scale skew uh, y and z okay so all everything is there and on the best part is also you have a uh, on screen handle we call it yeah i can rotate yeah i can size it up yeah scaling or i can skew it yeah like that or i can skew it like that okay so obviously we want to do a bit of uh, transformation right so what i'll do is i will just uh, create and okay how do you create keyframe if you notice on the right hand side here I hope you guys can see my screen. Uh, okay, you can. So if you just need a little squiggly uh, box here, okay. So at the beginning of the com, let's say go to the beginning of the com, I will create create a uh, a keyframe that you go set key. Yeah, set key at the beginning, and you see this thing turns into a blue. Okay, and then if I go down to frame fifty, and now if I move this thing to the right, I already got an animation. Yeah, let me just go back here. Oh, go to the left here okay so now we have animation we should have animation okay that's set key oh i set to the wrong one i set to rotation sorry about that let me do undo uh we do uh set key for the position and x and y okay so come to frame 50 i want to move it to the right so now we can see we have animation yeah i'm basically moving the footage okay and adli asking me just now uh, how do we create this is how you create and the best part about this is if you want to have something equivalent to what we see in after effect which is the um, uh, the um, the keyframe itself you click on dope sheet right in dope sheet you can see now you have keyframes these are the keyframes that you can see okay so we do have keyframes inside of nuke okay but it's, it's written it's under the dope sheet so here is your playhead you can see that and then we can move keyframes around as well yeah if i select these keyframes i can make them longer or shorter okay if i select all of them together i can move them like that so we do have layers i would say layers in nuke and they work quite similar to what we do, we have in after effects okay so now you can see here the blue bit here it's now takes a longer time for it to reach its destination because i've just lengthened the keyframes okay that's how you do keyframes inside of nuke uh, let's go back to node graph you can see that's a transform node and you notice transform node has this a now this a here means animated or animation all right this transform node has animation and if you notice the property pin that is blue right if it sits on the keyframe it becomes a bright blue if it goes out of the keyframe it becomes paler blue pale blue but we have animation okay and then you guys must be wondering what is this colors here red green and blue and then red green and blue in alpha so this is what we call visual indicators inside of uh, inside of uh, in, inside of nuke here yeah? uh, this shows that uh, this image is made out of three colors which is rgb 
and but this image or this particular node has four channels yeah we have three channels we have four channels this one has rgb and also has alpha channel okay um for me to move from after effects to nuke was a bit uh, problematic because in after effects we don't care about channels we don't care about rgb alpha and all that Okay, everything is done automatically by After Effects. But in Nuke, it's as if you're driving a manual car. You need to know all the gears and you need to know what channels are. You need to know how they work. Because when you do compositing, Alpha Channel is the biggest thing that you will have to understand. Uh, how to remove things from the foreground to the background is all done by Alpha Channel. All right? Some people call it Alpha Channel, some people call it Matte, some people call it Mask. It's all the same. As long as you see a black and white image, that's the one that you want. Why do you create a roto? Because you want to create that black and white image so you can remove things from the foreground and background. Why do you do a keying? Again, keying helps you create that black and white image as well. So uh, it's already one hour now. Uh, we are gone ab above the time that we are uh, supposed to do. But uh, I would hope that I can come in and talk more about this. But I hope I have given an idea of how things work in Nuke and After Effects or After Effects to Nuke. Uh, if you would like to learn more about this uh, webinar or would you like me to add, uh, make another webinar uh, where we can go a bit more in depth about stuff, do let me know, leave a comment there yeah, and let me know whether we, we should we make another webinar and uh, if it's useful for you and uh, maybe you can also suggest some topics I can talk about and do let me know if you guys are um, prefer After Effects or Nuke or Nuke or After Effects, okay? A anyway, we do have uh, trainings uh, at uh, Effectsco, right? Um, so this is our website. So if you if you feel that you want some training on Nuke or After Effects, or you want to know how to uh, transition from After Effects to Nuke, we do have trainings uh, inside our, uh, in our, in our institution. So if you go to under the uh, Nuke certification, you can call, get all the information from there. Yeah. So. Basically, in uh, Effectsco, I'll be the training. I'll be the trainer. I'll be training you on how you can use Nuke to the max. And we also have certification courses as well. Um, go down and look at it. And uh, if you feel that you want to ask me questions, please feel free to email me, Hussein at Effectsco.my. And uh, do uh, send me comments. Or And this, this video will be available uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, but I really hope that you guys have got something out of this. And if you, you need more information, you can always let me know. Okay, let me just before I go, let me just quickly check on some comments so I can answer you. Uh, let me see. Okay, wow, some good comments here. Uh, Humira, yes, all okay. At keyframe using mix merge node. Uh, Again and repeat change screen. Uh, actually, I know screen change, but cursor to show after the before. What about curve editors for value graph or speed graphs? Yes, we do have uh, curve editors in Nuke. Let me show it too quickly. Yeah. So in Nuke, um, we do have curve editors because part of animation you need to have curve editors. So there's one curve editor here. Okay. So you can change your uh, value and you can do all the speed ramps and whatnot. Okay. Very powerful. Uh, the other thing that I, I didn't get to show you guys is that new has a very powerful 3D system. Uh, so if I press tab on my keyboard, you can see now we are in actually a, what we call a 3D system in Nuke. Yeah, and this is very powerful. And then uh, in, um, After Effects, I'm not talking bad about After Effects, but uh, if coming to 3D, After Effects doesn't have even half the system unless you get some plugins and all that, which you have to you add to it. Yeah, but three, uh, Nuke already has 3D system built into it okay i'll show you quickly what i mean by this um, i will bring in a 3d item maybe i can just click on this icon here geometry i can bring in a cube right and the cube is already there right so we use uh, we don't we, we you cannot have character animation uh, you can bring models into nuke fbx model uh, or abc uh, the alembic models but you can't do character animation that's uh, nuke is not meant for character animation you just need to use maya or blender for that or any other software but we normally use uh, 3d for projection mappings very very powerful in projection mapping because if you can fake in 2d is better off instead of doing 3d stuff because 3d is one thing that takes time uh, is always render render heavy so if you can uh, fake in 2d why not 
right so if you can get things done in 2d is much much faster to render so we have um, we can create buildings and whatnot using uh, our 3d uh, inside here perhaps the next webinar i can show you some of that i actually plan to show you that but i did not know that the time is going to run out very fast because it's always exciting to learn about this stuff <laughs> uh, um, uh, the compositing I, I love compositing and this is something that i like i like to do and sometimes um, you know, time just passes by just like that. But do let me know if you want me to talk more about this. Maybe we can have another webinar next week, perhaps, if you're interested. Let me know and I'll, I'll be glad to jump into it and show you guys more about the 3D stuff that we can do inside of, uh, inside of Nuke. Okay. Let me jump back to your questions again. Uh, curve editor, yes, we do. Uh, again, okay. Uh, Homera wants another webinar. No problem. I think I can do that. Um, Homera, maybe you can ask me questions because I'm. I don't quite know what you're asking me. Maybe you can uh, send me an email. Yeah, asking me exactly what uh, you're trying to say. I can't. Uh, I I can't understand what you're trying to say. Um, okay, so we got some nice. A um, few people turning up. Again, uh, if there's anything that I've done which is a bit panicky or a bit not uh, um, not according to what you guys can see, this is my first time doing a webinar, so I hope you please excuse me. Uh, if you have any comments to make it better, do let me know. Send me an email or you know just put in a comment who saying you need to do this, you need to do that. I will be off uh, happy to receive all the comments and uh, and 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 ho hopefully improve. Uh, in the next uh, next webinar yeah so um, that's it guys thank you very much for joining me um, again it's a pleasure to uh, talk to you guys and it's a pleasure of mine to share my knowledge I love sharing my knowledge uh, if you have any questions you can always email me Hussein at effectsco.my um, uh, I hope to see you guys soon all right so take care bye bye